Hello and welcome to a Tabletop Bellhop Cardboard Coat Check. I am Mo Tuzano, the Tabletop Bellhop, your Cardboard Concierge, answering your gaming and game night questions and striving to make everyone's gaming experience better. Today the question I'm answering is what's in the box in regards to this? This is Shadow Kingdoms of Valeria, the latest game in the Valeria series of games from Daily Magic Games. This is a dice-driven game instead of a card-driven game where you are actually playing the monsters in the world of Valeria. This is a game I did a preview of on the Kickstarter, and this is the final production copy. Note, this is a Kickstarter version, which includes... Kickstarter edition includes four expansion modules, so you would not get the four expansion modules you will be seeing uh, if you purchase this game at your local game store. So to start off, we will go humans, elves, and dwarves have slowly encroached on your territories and slain monsterkin in the name of progress. They built citadels and villages over your homes and sacred spaces as they push you further into the darkness. Now it's time to rally your troops, lay waste to your oppressors, and bring forth the reign of the Shadow Kingdoms in this dice drafting worker placement game. So what we're going to do is I'm going to throw this down on the table. I'm going to cut the shrink first. And then we're going to take a look at what's in the box. There we have it. We are about to crack into the box. So here you have the box for Shadow Kingdoms of Valeria. I'm going to show off that side art, top art, and bottom. Cracking this open for the first time. All right. So the expansion comes in its own box. That is awesome. That is really cool. There is a separate shrink wrapped box here for the expansion material. So they're probably going to sell this separately, which is really cool. Then we got lots of foam. This is a nice touch for trying to keep things in the box nice and organized. And lots of dice. Lots of extra bag of baggies. Always appreciate extra baggies. Uh, we got some meeples. We got lots of stuff to look at here. So first off, I'm going to take all this foam off. Goodbye foam. We don't need you. Nice looking dragon bag. Then this is a dice drafter. So we have a nice looking dragon bag here with a. Uh, it's uh, cloth, not like felt or silk. It's standard cloth. We're going to leave that expansion for last. We got tons of meeples. We got some hobbit sized cards here. We're going to throw off to the side for a second. We got all the dice. We're going to put all that aside to get to these punch boards. It's a lot in this. Look at this. Guys for some of that. All right, so we're going to take a look. Look at how much cardboard is in here. That's a nice, thick chunk of cardboard. So what we've got here are a bunch of tracking tokens. You've got the kingdom boards where you're going to be taking over various areas of the kingdom. I already see improvements here for clarity compared to the expansion. The expansion had more art on here, which showed you terrain, but it didn't do anything. Where this is what you actually need is the game info. Those are two-sided. Then we have our first racial board. So we have the skeletons. It's one of one of the races you have here. So you have this player board. There's one of these for each of the races in the game. Okay, I can't actually get these to come out. So we're going to hold this tipped up. Then we've got the board for, okay, another player board. Again, another map board with tokens. And we have the orcish looking bad guys. Note, these are not two-sided, but they do have a faction symbol on the back. Then we've got my favorite, which are the Knolls. I love that artwork. Great artwork by the Miko. Mihailo Demetrevsky. Then we've got the Undead, or the Gargoyles. Then the really gross goblins. The really gross goblins. I might have two boards here. Do I have two boards here? No. So these are nice, thick boards. Then we have the rule book, oddly buried under those, and the game board. So rule book, we'll flip through quickly here. Nice setup instructions. These actually look a lot like the prototype. Though these are showing the new components, so that's cool. It is showing like the new boards. What you get awards for. Gold shrine, lots of examples. Lots of great examples here, how to do a battle. The different player boards, how they work, how the campaign map works, which is what I showed you earlier. Then we are looking at the solo variant. So you're looking at 11 pages for the main game, 12 pages for the solo variant, and then summary of all the different champion cards, and then some credits in the back of the book. And what I love is this awesome quick play reference on the back of the rule book. Greatly appreciate that. We're going to put that aside to put on the top. 
Then we're going to try to crack open the board. I think it's going to fit on the camera perfectly, but if not, I can zoom out if I can figure out how to unfold it because I lack skill today. All right, here you have the full player board. So you've got your regions that you're going to go to, what you get for going into those regions. This is where you're going to place your dice. You've got a scoring track on the outside edge. Here's the, the battles you'll be able to commit. The, the armies you can form are going to go along here. The champions you can go higher are going to go here. And your end game scoring rewards are going to go up here. I love the colors on this board. It really pops. I really love the look of this. Uh, it is single-sided. All right, we're going to put all that back in. It's going to be a bit of a mess because some of these top pieces fell out. So one of the things that definitely has changed since the prototype are these discs. So in the prototype, these were literally, um, what would you call them? Like, like tiddlywinks, plastic chips that were clear. They have switched them to cardboard tokens with the faction color on them, which works fine. I gotta admit, I, I miss, I'm gonna miss the plastic a bit, but having the actual factions on there is definitely more thematic. And we have the bags, bags. Next, we move on to the rest of these components. We're gonna move this out of the way. Take a look at, what do we wanna look at first? Let's look at these meeples and stuff. So lots of extra baggies here. I say this every time I find one of these board game pro tip. If you live anywhere with high humidity, keep this in your game box. It will keep moisture out. That's what they're for. So we have little wooden tokens for keeping track of your resources during the game. These are kind of hexagonal shaped. So I'll just hold one of those up. You got a hexagonal shaped token in green. Sorry, that's not for resources. Sorry, these are the gems. Okay, so these are one of the resources you can collect to do things like reroll dice. So these are the gems you can collect on one of the spots. I'm just gonna toss that in loose because we'll figure that out later. These are for tracking your resources. So you've got gold, magic, and morale. You're gonna take one set of these for each player, and you're gonna use these on your player board to track things. These are nice, well-painted wooden tokens, a nice depth to them. Nice color coded, so nice to help with uh, color blind friendly. They're also shaped differently. Then we move on to the some of the most badass, awesome meeple I've ever seen in a board game. So you've got a couple different sets here. I was really looking forward to these because these did not come in the main game. These are each unique. There are one sided. Oh man, look at this little goblin. Oh, he's upside down. Sorry. Little goblin meeple. And then we've got like the Noel people, and then the undead, then we've got the, the gargoyles as a bat wing, then we've got the, the orcs, and then a spiked club for the red-ish guys, and then to go with those you have your lieutenant. This is your worker placement piece. So these little ones are for tracking your score. These big ones are your worker placement piece. These are two-sided, so that's cool. So you've got a gray with a shield and an axe. You've got a dragon. You've got a red warrior, evil looking warrior. You've got the gnolls. And the gargoyles. These are some cool looking pieces. I gotta say, those are nice. I am just gonna baggy those back up in the same bags. I don't see any reason to split them up at this point. At some point I will split these so that everyone, all the player pieces are in one area. Well, that's odd. Oh, no, it's some of the little ones. The little ones are not two-sided, which makes sense because they're not standing up. See, these are going to stand up on the board, so you want them two-sided. These are going to lay flat on a scoring track, so it's cool to have them. Other... Sorry, the little tiny green guy. This is the green guy scoring track, but the scoring tracks are single-sided. Okay, dice. Oddly, there are different numbers, different dice. So there are only nine of the the Noel dice. Wonder why the different numbers. I'll have to, that, that's something I'll have to check in the rules. Not something I remember. These are custom dice. So we have the brown die. They're also multi-use. So you have your strength, you also have money, and then you also have a discount. So when you roll the dice, it's like I can use this to buy or I can use it to get a discount or so on. So we have all the dice of the same color would be the same. And to be honest, all the dice actually have the same sides. They're just in different colors. So we've got the brown dice here. You can see them. 
And what I'm not going to bother doing is I won't bother opening these up because all these dice are the same, just different colors. They do have a symbol in the corner to reflect the um, which faction they are. So you can kind of see that at the bottom corner, which faction it's are. So this would be a, a five, but it's also a one coin, and it's for the, the Noel faction. It has the Noel faction symbol. So we're going to just toss these back in the box and move over to the hobbit size cards which now I'm going to really wish I had my exacto. So what we have here, these are warband cards. These are going to go on the side. These are the warbands you are trying to form when you play them. So they have a name of the warband uh, This uh, and, and what you're going to do with them. So this is Ambush the Watcher in the Water. So it's got a type, it is arranged, and it requires you to have one Noel die and one skeleton die. There's going to be a whole bunch of these with all different factions and things you do to do them. All featuring awesome Miko art, like Apprehend the King's Herald requires two gargoyles and has a nice picture of two gargoyles on it. There are all kinds of these, lots of great looking artwork, like Cheer Firebomb, Barbarossa's Castle, which requires a Noel and a a uh, gargoyle. There's Bombard Vinpiri Baron, which requires goblins and a, sorry, goblins and a knoll, and it's a siege type, because there are different types of these. And part of this is what you're gonna try to collect for in-game scoring. You're also gonna try to defeat these by rolling dice and so on. But I'm not gonna get into how to play the game, that's not what this is about. So again, fantastic artwork. I'm not a huge fan of the smaller cards, but you know what, it makes the board much smaller. So that is the deck of hordes, basically the different hordes. These are end game scoring goals. So as you notice, that one was a siege. Well, the first person to complete three siege missions will score seven points. The second person, five, the third, fourth. There are a whole bunch of these that you need one of each type. This is for those map boards. You have to have this pattern on your map board. This is a different pattern to have on your map board. These are all, I wouldn't say end game scoring, but bonus points you can earn. This is have six cards underneath your your tableau then we get into the heroes these are ranked at different levels these are instants of the cheapest to hire and they do something really quick so like this guy converts one magic into a gem instantly this one just gives you four magic again featuring awesome looking miko artwork uh, then we have this elite guard that gives you two of the the green two of your your command ability whole deck of these then we have ones that are recurring. So this is a recurring ability, like whenever you want, you can convert your green into magic. Again, featuring awesome Miko artwork. Uh, something to do with the gems. These are the ones that are all summarized. For every red card you've taken, get a gold and get a magic. Again, featuring awesome Miko artwork. I really dig this peddler, for example. Face a little goblin trying to sell you a fairy. And then you have finally your permanent abilities. Oh, excuse me. These are all end game scoring. So you are going to get five victory points for every gem you have with a max of 10. This one is you are going to get two victory points for every double axe mission you've completed with a max of 10. And for example, this is going to be you get five for every completed mission you have to a max of 10 and so on. So that is all the cards. Now that we've looked at the cards, we've looked at the dice, we've looked at everything else, that's everything you get in Shadow Kingdoms of Valeria. Now I am gonna steal one of these baggies just to put these cards in, hopefully. Just so they're not floating around loose in my box. Yeah, we're gonna take a look now inside the Shadow Kingdoms of Valeria Rise of Titans expansion, which came with the Kickstarter version of Shadow Kingdoms of Valeria. So we're gonna take a look what you get inside this box. I'm gonna crack the shrink. So it says, Lord Nor the Lich King has sacrificed his essence to bring you the Shrine of the Titans. He has unearthed ancient spells and powerful wraiths. Now the time now is the time to send your hordes to great battles and crush the people of Valeria that have taken your lands. With these new powers at your disposal, will you be able to reclaim your glory? One to five players, age 14 plus, takes an hour. We're gonna take a look at what we get here. I oh, love the Miko artwork. 
The Miko is my favorite. We have a rule book, nice and short. So from what I understand, there are multiple different uh, expansions available in here. So we have a story of Rise of the Titans. We have the Shrine of the Titans, which is a, a double-sided shrine that we are going to put in. There is the Great Battles expansion. So you have two different things here, and it looks like there's going to be some cards to put alongside the normal battle board. Then we have the Ancient Spells, which is a nice two-page expansion here. And then we have the Wrath, Wraith Dice. So we have five Wraith Dice now that can be added to the game. So you're going to have additional troops. Uh, they do give you more of the base dice that came in the base game. We've got baggies. Always appreciate that. So I'm going to show you off these Wraith Dice really quick. These, again, are the same as came in the base game, but in purple. So we have the Wraith Dice there. Nice printed dice. Nope, not etched. And then some extras of the original dice. We got some new Hobbit sized cards. We have baggies, thank you. And we have a punch board. So our punch board here has more of the tokens and it has a, whatever this new board is. And then we have a new way of calculating victory points. During battle, uh, these are two sided and they are actually different. So I'm not sure what the two different sides are. Different here, this one looks different as well because that says less than 10, this is less than 13. So some new punch boards, as well as um, more tokens for the base races. All five of them. Let's take a quick look at the cards we get. Nice resealable bag. Uh, all the same back with the creepy thing on it. I assume that's a wraith. That's really creepy looking. And on the other side, we have a bunch of... Oh, see, these are the spells. So they do two different things. So this one particularly says... Alizar's Elemental Infusion, each cube on your player board gains one strength. Or Bosco's Derivation from Chaos. Roll one die on your player board to gain two gold and one mana, but you must keep the result. So there you go. New powers and spells for your Valeria Shadow Kingdoms. And there are a ton of these. This is a significant deck. I'm not going to read them off. I dig the cool names. Bosco's Derivation from Chaos. Oh, same one. But it's on the top this time. And instead, it's with Dendalon's Geomantric Transmutation. I dig spell names. So cool. Bunch of spells. I like it. No clue how they work. I'm assuming it's a new resource you can buy. Maybe you get them from cards. Maybe those Wraith dice. I gotta admit, that was not in the prototype. So Then we have these larger cards, which as we saw, go on the side of the battle board. So these obviously have spots for you to put your, your markers, and this says the Great Battle at Dark Tide Harbor, and it shows goblins and skeletons, and it looks like probably if you commit people to these battles, you're going to get these resources. That's my guess. I haven't read the rules for this expansion. You got some nice artwork at the top. You got places to place care, player tokens. There's a nice castle looking one. Really interested in checking these out, seeing as I have not gotten to see these. So there's an example of the Great Battle at Defiant Ridge, which takes undead and gargoyles and it looks like you would get dice or you would get coins or money for contributing to this battle so there you have it everything you get in rise of titans the expansion for shadow kingdoms of valeria to my knowledge none of this will be kickstarter exclusive you should eventually be able to buy all of it separately but note that this does not come in the retail version of shadow kingdoms of valeria this is came in the Kickstarter version and should be available separately. That is Rise of Titans. So there we have both together. And something I always appreciate about a board game expansion is it fits. Well, <laughs> not how I currently have things stacked. It fits in the box. Once I neaten it up, it'll be fine. So there you have it. What you get in the box for Shadow Kingdoms of Valeria a new dice uh, bag builder, dice drafting, worker placement game set in the same world as the other Valeria games like Card Kingdoms of Valeria, Quests of Valeria, Villages of Valeria, etc. Um, big fan of this game. 
I did get to check out the prototype. I am looking forward to trying out the production copy. I am really impressed by what I see in here. Really awesome looking meeple. Some great looking uh, player boards. Amazing artwork by the Miko. No complaints at all on what I saw in this box. Expansion looks really cool. Looks like some nice new stuff in there. Maybe adding some asymmetry with the spells, which is something I think the game could definitely use. I'm really looking forward to checking this out. Thank you for joining me for this unboxing. Now, I am Mo Tuzano, the Tabletop Bellhop, your cardboard concierge. You can find me all over the internet as Tabletop Bellhop, one word. And you can head to our website at tabletopbellhop.com for more gaming content. If you dig this video, it would be awesome if you went to patreon.com slash tabletopbellhop and considered tipping your bellhop. That's all I have to say about this one. This looks sweet. I am looking forward to playing this. It looks great. I love the prototype. I even like playing it solo. I am really looking forward to playing the full version. Looks great. Thumbs up, Daily Magic Games. Thank you.